It's time to replace my old style ceiling fan. This is the 42 inch vintage acrylic ceiling fan comes shipped in this box. So straight out of the box, you have all of these accessories, you know, the light base, the folded fan, extension rods, tools required, lights, control box, Instructions manual and of course the remote. So the first thing you're gonna do is locate your breaker box. You can have the option of turning off the main control unit, but in case I need to use the lights or my internet, I'm just gonna simply turn off the lights and also a living room where my ceiling fan is located. And test to confirm, everything's off. My first step is to install the mounting bracket. That way I don't have to worry about holding on to the ceiling fan. As you can see, depending on the setup, I already have this with, with two holes right here, which I can simply reuse the existing screws. We use the four provided screws. See, it goes through here. I think in their instructional video, they use these four holes. So you want to make sure you mount to a ceiling joist. That way you can support the weight. Here's what the bracket looks like when fully mounted. My next step is to attach the light cover onto the fan chasers with the five supply screws. Now I'm gonna connect the two wires L and N. While using some end caps, I also like to use some electrical tape to keep it tight. Okay, then I'm gonna insert this thread. And put this over that. And then add this black end piece to tighten it down. Since my ceiling isn't that tall, I'm gonna bypass the extension rod. Simply use a short rod. Assemble the piece like this, okay? And then thread the existing wires through here. So I'm gonna pull out on this bolt right here with the little clamp. This is what's gonna go through the hole in the center right here. Don't forget to insert this little clamp. And don't forget to tighten these two screws to prevent it from vibrating when in use. All right, next I'm gonna connect these three wires, the white, black, and the blue, from this motor to here. This is the ground wire, and this is just the receiver. These two I'm gonna connect to the top of the ceiling. Okay, so before inserting a ceiling lamp, you want to loosen these two screws. Loosen them because when I hang it on and put the cover on, I'm going to slide it into the two screw cutouts. That way I can tighten them and then twist it. Okay, once I have the ceiling lamp connected to the bracket, I'm gonna connect the wires, black to black, white to white, ground to ground, not using the red, because I have it capped off. And then I'm gonna slide the box in here, put everything nicely ordered together, and that's, that's when that screw is gonna see come into play. And you just twist it tight, and then tighten the screws. 
It'll help out a lot to have some wire strippers too to make the connection better. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty short. Okay, got the ground capped off. Oh, it's electrical tape. Got the black to black, white to white. Now I'm going to add the cap and then electrical tape. So this is actually my second time trying to install it because I wasn't successful the first time. My mistake was assuming that I was using the wire nuts properly. You're supposed to twist them together. You know, you don't have to pre-twist. Twist them together until when it tightens and then the wires start to, the two wires start to intertwine like that. So that's actually a proper way to use wire nuts. No wonder it came loose. Okay, everything is snuggled in. See how the screws fit through there? You just twist it and then I'll tighten the screws. Some situations just require a different type of tool. I can't even get my smaller screwdriver to tighten these screws on this ceiling fan. Fortunately, I have this nifty tool called a right angle screwdriver. So those hard to reach places gets the job done the screws are tight you might have to get yourself one of these right angle screwdrivers because if you don't use the extension rod there's not enough space to fit even a smaller screwdriver i'll be using these asher 60 watts e26 bulbs with the ceiling fan so they look like these i think they look pretty stylish Okay, let's turn the breaker back on. Okay, here's the big moment of truth. Hold on a second. Let me try the switch. Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry, the fan. Hello. That's soothing. It's beautiful. Medium. Hi. Not too much vibration. Wow, that's beautiful. I love it already. I'm not going to lie guys, installation was quite involved. It makes life a lot easier if you have wire strippers and also right angle screwdriver, especially you don't use a long rod. You're working in a confined space. So as you can see, it folds nicely. Let's go ahead and turn it on again. By the way, I love these lights. The E26 is perfect. Let's go ahead and turn it low. The fan blades are made of ABS material. As it spreads out, to its widest length. I think that's, it reaches out to highest length and probably on the high. That's 41.7 inches compared to the much wider on the old style ceiling fan, which I have. Okay, so it takes about one second for it to reach its full uh, reach. Okay, as you can see high, there's a little bit of shaking. Um, it's not the quietest fan, but the breeze is very cool. I really love the style of the lampshade. It gives that industrial look as opposed to, you know, the office style, which is boring. Especially the old style is uh, just not that uh, pretty. So if you have a dimmer light switch, you are able to dim it, but I don't. Overall, I'm pretty happy about this ceiling fan. It does look quite beautiful, doesn't it? Much improvement over my old style. But I just wish installation would have been simpler. Um, but now you, got, you guys know what I dealt with. You don't have to deal with the same difficulties.
So whether you're looking for a ceiling fan with a light combo to dress up your living room like I am or in the bedroom, definitely give this vintage acrylic ceiling fan a look. I think you guys will be very happy.